Welcome, Joe Short. Hi, Henry. My fantastic bass player extraordinaire. Great to see you, my friend. It's been a while. I remember watching you play with the girls back in Bath many years ago. Um, thank you for coming, by the way. And Not at all. I just wanted everyone to kind of know more about you um, as a musician, how you kind of started off in the Bath music scene all those years ago, and most importantly, how you transitioned from uh, playing in local bands in Bath to where you are now playing with Susie from Susie and the Banshees. What was that like? I suppose from, from when I first picked up a guitar, I was 14 and I, I first picked up a guitar. I mean, I'm assuming most bass players maybe transition from guitar, although I'm happy to be told otherwise. But I had started with guitar, always wanted to be a guitarist. And then when I was at school, I think a guy in the year above came around to our our room and said, does anyone here play bass? We've got a band and we've got some shows and we need a bass player. And I'd, I'd never played bass at all, but I thought, I want to be in a band. And they've got shows. So I just said, yeah, I play bass. <laughs> um, and they went, great, well, um, come and let's do some rehearsing next week. You know. Yeah. So I went off and found the cheapest bass I could get that I could just about afford. I think it was 70 pounds or something. But anyhow, so I had the bass. I thought, it's the first four strings of a guitar. How difficult can it be? Let's get on with that. Got in the band. Did some shows it was great it was kind of rock band it was fun they got loads of gigs everywhere and it was incredibly exciting obviously being 16 and playing gigs and all of that stuff so um that was my kind of first foray into a bath music scene when i was at school here and then um i kind of always wanted to have kind of be a bit more original and write stuff so this was a kind of mixture of some of their songs and covers um, but I always wanted to do more writing. That's what I kind of thought would be great fun. So I eventually kind of saved up enough money to get my first four track. I had a yeah. Squire Strat, which I got for my 16th birthday. So I had a Squire Strat, the Marlin Sidewinder now. Uh, I didn't have any amps or any pedals, but I would just overdrive my four track to get a distortion if I needed that. Yeah. Um, and then, cassette, four track cassette. Yes. Not many that. people will remember what cassettes were like, but they Man. were all the rave back in the days. I know, I miss it some, for some reason. But, and, and if you put one of those cassettes in a normal cassette player, it sounded crazy because <laughs> they were running at super fast speed. And then I kind of, I just started building up my own little kind of home studio setup, and then and didn't really kind of play actively in bands as such. I was just writing and recording in little kind of partnerships. So obviously, loved the four track thing, slowly built up more bits of kit. Eventually, I... I think I, I worked on a pumpkin farm and saved up some money to buy a reel-to-reel 8-track -reel and a sequencer and a drum machine and a few more, a few more pedals. Um, and so then I could really start constructing my own little thing, a little kind of, I think it was a Proteus keyboard. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah, I remember so that. Which so blue what was this? Oh, God. Yeah. Early, early 90s, okay. probably, when yeah. I was getting stuck into it. So... Um, so then I went to art school. Strangely, at art school, there weren't that many bands. Uh, you know, you kind of hear all these stories about Blur. Is it because it was art school and not music school? <laughs> no, I thought, or no, artists, I, I think, see, I think maybe, really yeah. of, yeah. I've always been suspicious <laughs> of music school, music college bands, but that's a bit harsh. But I, I wanted to have an art school band that was going to be far more weird and experimental. Not that yeah. I was particularly into that. I mean, I was being raised on kind of pop music and then, then slowly kind of like went left field and got, into, got big into the Pixies and and Weezer and stuff like that. God, those um, were the days. Oh, and so I, um, yeah, I, I kind of left art school and had, I'd just been doing my own sort of stuff. It was starting to get a bit more kind of interesting and guitar-y. But I, I, I met someone who was running a studio in Trowbridge. When okay. I'd come back to Bath to, to, um, to play with this band that I'd originally played with, that, that guy that came around to my study and said, hey, who plays bass around here? I stayed in touch with him because he was a brilliant drummer. And so when I'd written all these demos myself, I came back to this, I found this studio in Trowbridge, phoned up this drummer guy and said, can you come and play drums on my stuff? I'll play everything else, but I want to record it properly. So I went to this studio in Trowbridge and met Steve, Steve Evans, who became my best buddy and, and is the MD of the Susie Project. Okay. And was an original guitarist for, for many tours. And um, so, and I just remember thinking, ah, oh, I love what he does and how he hears music and his ideas. And so we just stayed in touch. And then eventually, so when I finished all this kind of art school stuff and I came back to Bath, I just thought, I just want to hang out with these guys and do some music for a bit and get it out of my system. 
And that ended up being kind of like 15 years of the girls, you know, yeah. which was my band um, with Steve and Bart and various other people. So, yeah. is there anything on Spotify or anything? There is the girls that we can find. You can find the girls. The, band um, called the girls. Girls, the girls. There are quite a few girls bands, as you can imagine. But look for the girls, and the album is Akimbo, um, and that okay. is on Spotify. And that was our that was the record we made with Wall of Sound. We had a, a, a small deal. Eventually, we got a deal with Wall of Sound um, and made that record. Um, and then they kind of like folded into play again, Sam label. And you know how when labels change a million times and eventually yeah. there's a whole new strand of people. And I don't think they actually ever released that record. But um, for me, don't let, you know, uh, financial success get in the way of, of your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so we made this record, which I still think is a, a just brilliant and, and had the best fun. I think, you know, no one would choose to do music because it was a wise financial decision, particularly, exactly. I don't think. I mean, I'd love to know why they would choose that, but like, like all the right decisions, do it because you flipping love it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that then, then of course, it did get back into playing the live thing, and I suppose that's something which, obviously, reconnecting with now, doing this tour with Susie, was something I wasn't necessarily sure we'd have an opportunity to do again because we we played ten years ago, we played fifteen years ago, and so you kind of think, oh, she's kind of done a thing and you know had a massive career, and why would she want to do that? But I think. When some of the offers come in for certain shows, I think even people with her kind of experience want to mm. just go, hell, let's just try so that. How did that come about? How did you, were you introduced to her? So, so someone ring someone and say, I yeah. need a bass player. Yeah. Oh, I know a guy yeah. called Joe. Or... Well, because we hadn't played, we, Steve and I hadn't done tons of stuff outside of our own project. But, you know, obviously there's, a, there's little scenes and little cities. You do kind of cross over and meet various people here and there. And, yeah. Um, and there were sort of small connections with other kind of bands doing stuff, but we weren't, we weren't, and never considered ourselves partic particularly good, good players. You know, I thought we wrote some. I thought you were. Well, it's very sweet, but we were. You know, I was never someone who was going to pursue a session kind of musician uh, line, as it were. I I wanted to write stuff, and I loved playing it, but I, w I wasn't necessarily a kind of gun for hire like that. There was much yeah. better players than me around, and and I, I'm not just trying to be. Not, I just there were, and that wasn't my thing necessarily, but. But what happened was, whilst you know, I mean, most people in bands would be doing other jobs, so I was doing a lot of photography to kind of pay the rent. Yeah. And Steve would be, he was a brilliant record producer and, and mix engineer. So he was recording bands in all the studios around here, you know, he knew all of those places and then was slowly getting into much more kind of serious uh, studios and working with some really amazing artists, including Robert Plant. Yeah. And, and did a whole lot of work with um, wow. various people. And then, of course, so what came about and the link that happened was that Steve got offered to produce the Susie record, her first solo record, uh, with Charlie Jones, who you may know, Charlie, the most amazing bass player who played with uh, Paige and Plant for many years. So he, yeah. was, he was producing this record with Steve. So at the end of that recording process, when the record was coming out and she wanted to take it on the road, um, you know, obviously she said, I need to put a band together. And it, it wasn't going to be a Banshees thing. You know, that was that was done for her. She's very much a solo record, something different. Um, and so Steve then became kind of like, cool, we'll, we'll be the band for this thing. So that was the, that was the end. Uh, and originally Charlie was on bass um, until he then rejoined playing with Goldfrapp. So he was on the Goldfrapp okay. tour and they were touring quite a bit. So that was quite a commitment to him. And that's when I snuck in and uh, very uh, happily took the opportunity to, to play. Um, obviously, we're kind of my mates, and obviously yeah, then yeah. meeting Sue and playing all of those amazing songs, and primarily at that time, the record that they had made together, um, yeah. Charlie and Steve with Susie. So um, that was the connection. I was very lucky, you know, I, I, I catch the crumbs from the table. Yeah. Um, but it's been brilliant ever since then. Um, just great opportunities, meeting, like all these things, even from the first day you're ever in a band, you get to meet interesting people at gigs or uh, the people you least expect from the, uh, and that's what I really and love. Travel. Oh, and travel. I mean, You've this, been to how yeah. many different countries? Oh man, uh, we've been extremely lucky. Um, just loads of beautiful venues in Europe, theatres on this last tour that I've just, just looked at and gone, how have I made it in here? This is just yeah. so wonderful. But did, um, did you feel intimidated when you first went on stage and realised you were in front of thousands of people rather than a couple of hundred? Interestingly, 
That is obviously a, a, an obvious change. You're, you're, you're suddenly playing on a stage with a very successful artist who's got some serious fans. I mean, she's iconic. Yeah. And I don't think I fully appreciated that until mm. walking on the stage. My first show was in New York, Irving Plaza. Not a massive venue, but a, a venue that I've been to with Steve to watch. Uh, we went to see um, John Spencer Blues Explosion there. Okay. And a band called Suicide, who are amazing. I mean... So to be on that stage, we were like, oh my God, we're sharing the stage wow. of these legends in our lives. And then I think I, that's when I suddenly got a handle on, oh my God, this is, a, this is a hell of a thing. You know, Debbie Harry was there. I mean, like, oh, I'm just trying to stop my knees from banging together. Try to be, yeah. cool, be cool, Joe. So I think that was, I, in, a way, in a weird way, my, I was sli slightly ignorant of quite the level of, you know, the, the, historically everything she'd done. And I think that might have been just as well but like you say, because sometimes stepping into that thing is all a bit like, what? It's you all a bit much. So I, kind of, I was just in it, and suddenly it was, you're on, you know. Yeah. And actually, some of that fear is part of the buzz, though. I'm, I, you know, it doesn't get, it doesn't change much. I still get nervous going on stage. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, it's good for you. That it's, it's an actually, Definitely. at the time, it might not necessarily feel great, but it's the thing you kind of miss when you're not doing it. Yeah. And you come off stage and you kind of go, oh, that's one less gig to do. It's kind of, I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> because it, it's such fun. It's, it's such a buzz. You're, and particularly playing with Susie, seeing how she performs. Again, yeah. that's not something, you know, I, I think we were a pretty good band and we did good shows, but that level of experience and seeing her telling a story over two hours yeah. and keeping people absolutely gripped by every move. I mean, it's a, it's a physical thing. Yeah. As well as it is with all of that. I, I, it's staggering to see yeah. and to... So were artist. you a, a, a Susie fan before? Had you been very I knew, familiar with the I knew, songs? Yeah, or? I knew some of it. I wouldn't. I don't. I could honestly say I was a big Susie fan. I knew a lot of the stuff. It was slightly, slightly before my kind of musical. Yeah. You know, I'm old, but I'm not quite as old as as the rest of the band. Um, <laughs> and uh, so some of that, some of that stuff had missed me. But that's not, you know. Similarly, God, we're, you know, we're massively into Led Zeppelin. They were way before my time. Yeah. Bowie, all of that stuff. So. I kind of, it's been really fun getting into it. And yeah. there were lots of friends of mine who were kind of almost more excited than me when it first kind of was on the cards. They were like, yeah. dude, are you going to get to play Christine at Happy House? And I'd be like, yeah, I kind of know that song. Yeah. Um, and of course now I'm like, oh my God, they're just Iconic beasts. Iconic yeah. yeah, and to play them, you know, you know, you see it on a set list and you go, oh my God, I'm about to play that. It's yeah. just brilliant. The creativity of all of that early stuff, it, it went across all the instruments. I mean, some of those guitar parts are like, so intricate and interesting and original yeah. similarly on bass they don't just hack around a root note which you know is pretty unusual for a punk band yeah drumming that's incredibly musical and all over the kit and doesn't just sit on the you know twos and the fours yeah. it's it's incredibly interesting and it's only kind of by getting inside it and kind of deconstructing it when you're learning it you kind of appreciate it quite that, yeah. as much as that so it's more musical rather than just yeah, I mean, it does have a lot of sort of primal kind of tribal yeah, stuff yeah. to it. But actually, when you assess it, nothing is wasted in there. You know, it's quite minimal at times, but super interesting. Just not like other punk stuff. And you can see why they were so, and still are, so kind of um, uh, influential in yeah. a lot of that kind of music. And if you consider the time, particularly as Susie, you know, as a woman, being the front of that band. I mean, it's, it's what, what is she like to work with? I think it's refreshingly the real deal. No bullshit. She does really go into a zone on a show. Um, yeah. And I think what's interesting is like for someone who's done it so much and as long as she has, with all that experience, she still gets properly, you know, into that zone of, no, yeah. I don't know if it's nervous, but like, give her space, you know. But that's because everything's on her, you know. I, yeah. I, quite frankly, I go up and play a howler yeah, they might be a bit pissed off, but they're there for her, you know. Exactly. And we're there to make as much of that solid and brilliant as possible. Yeah. Because um, she wrote the songs. So yeah, she's, she's, telling those, she's telling those stories. Them, yeah. She's telling those stories and telling them with all of herself, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I can see that every night. And that's why it's such a physically demanding thing. Uh, I think it's amazing that, you know, she's kept doing that for what, 40 years or whatever it is, you know. And um, But she's really good company, super sweet to us. Yeah. Um, very loyal, um, like that's a big part of her thing. Good. And she's happily like if we're out and like when we're in the states, then there's am the amazing Cruel World show um, a couple of months ago, and you know me meeting up with Billy Idol and people. I'm just like yeah. kind of going what? Wow. And again, they're just the sweetest people. They're all mates from South London, you know. Yeah. And 
as you expect when you hear these stories about some of these characters, just just mates, just catching yeah. up on stuff they did. They've been in bands, and you know, there's very little nonsense around those characters because they're just getting on doing it. It's probably exactly. everyone else either side is kind of freaking out and going mad. Well, I found that as well when I was touring with my band, and you, we met. We first got to the UK, and I started meeting people at Stereophonics and Kylie Minogue and all these people, wow. and because I'd never been to the UK, I rarely ever heard of these people. So meeting them, I had no clue Perfect. who they were. Yeah. And because they were just normal people, and you have this misconception of these big time famous rock stars and people like Peter Gabriel before I met him, I always thought he was just larger than life. And when you met him, you would, you'd feel the energy in the room kind of yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. you know, and he was just, you know, sat there having dinner next to me and, we're having normal conversation. Yeah, talk, <laughs> just talk about, about the football. Normal whatever. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, yeah, this is insane. It's yeah. great. And with and Sue, it's, it's probably a yeah, talk about tea and cats or whatever. Yeah, you know, it's just totally fine like that. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's quite a kind of refreshing thing when you bring all that kind of. It's all your own baggage, isn't it? When you meet these people, Absolutely, you got to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Christ, even people that know her well, like Gary Newman, good good mate of hers, yeah. huge huge fan. He's come to a couple of shows. Loveliest guy. Um, and I noticed he posted something the other day. He came to catch the show we did at um, in Belgium with Placebo, and 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 uh, he's very. I mean, it was amazing. He'd just come down from Antwerp because he saw that she was playing, and the family all came, and they they all know her well and love the show. And but he posted this thing saying, "Oh, thanks so much, Sue, for for getting me into the show and for not scaring me." So there's even <laughs> someone who knows well still come yeah, with it, that like it's Sue, so uh, yeah. Which I don't mind. I think some of that fizz is is is. Kind of cool, isn't it? You know, why she, she she has every right to be yeah Sue when she wants to be. It's just kind yeah. of she can embellish that character sometimes if she wants to. I mean, even as a band, you know, she give you a look on stage and just kind of you're like, oh, yeah, what's yeah. going on there? Well, as now you're on this level of lots uh, of I complete mean, blank. Absolutely, where many many musicians starting out, as well as some professional musicians who've been playing for many years, would like to be on this level. Touring regularly, I mean, making, I'm not going to say decent living, I'd hope a good living off of touring. And As we said earlier, you don't do it for that reason, but it's all right. Exactly, but I mean, you're paying the bills, Yeah, yeah, which is good. That's That, to me, is making it yeah. in the music industry. If Being able to can, continue to make music. Absolutely. Yeah. If you can do it for a living and do it as a full-time job and pay the bills, that's... Oh, you, man, you, to you've, total you've respect to anyone success. who does that. That's respect. Yeah. However they got it. I just got to hand it to people. Yeah, I think it's incredible people who do that. And you guys, I know that Rob the drummer as well, and he's an absolutely lovely guy. I get to play with him. And I mean, he makes me look good. Yeah, yeah, you guys are fantastic musicians, and I think she's lucky to have you guys. And you're also very lucky to be sharing the stage with such an icon. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Not at all. Being Thank here you today. And is there anything else that you wanted to kind of let people know? I'll get playing as much as possible, you know, because. I'm, I'm just learning yeah, okay. all the time, all of this, even this last bit of tour, which a lot of stuff we've done before, but just get in bands, even if you're not the best band ever, you're playing with and learning how to, how, to, how to be together in a space with a band, not just what you're playing. It's, you know, it's a, a lot of bands don't get past the first record or whatever because they, can't, they just can't learn to be in a space together. We're yeah. all going to be different. We're going to wind each other. All of those things, I think, is all really good to do. So get in bands, play as much as you can different kinds of songs, everything you learn from it all. It's just brilliant. Excellent. Thanks again, Joe. Dude. Much appreciated. Guys, make sure to like and subscribe. There's more to come. Peace out. Peace out.